morning, everybody. I hope you have your nice hot cup of coffee. Mm. Good. This morning, we're going to be reading from uh, Acts 9, 36 through 42. Now, we're going to be talking about the power of our words, all right? So this is an account of uh, Peter. And let's start. Let's find out what's going on here. It says um, in verse 36, starting, In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became very sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Verse 39, Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All of the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Now, Dorcas is Tabitha. Okay. So here's what happened, starting in verse 40. This is where it gets interesting. Peter sent them all out of the room. Okay. So he was about to do a miracle, or God was about to do a miracle through Peter. But first he had to get rid of any possibility of doubt of uh, people that may not have faith, people that didn't believe. So he, uh, he got them all out of the room. That's number one. Number two. He got down on his knees and he prayed. So he went to God with the problem, with the situation. He prayed to God. Now, look what happens next. He prayed. Then turning toward the dead woman, he said, uh, notice it says dead woman. He said, Tabitha, get up. Tabitha, get up. Three words. He addressed the problem, and he told the problem what was going to happen. All right? She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This began to be known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord Okay, so let's talk about this. There was a problem, a situation. Uh, Tabitha had died, and Peter was called in. Now, you must ask yourself, why did they call Peter in? They must believe that Peter could do something that they couldn't do. Well, he could, and here's why. Because Peter had the faith. Peter had the connection to God. Anytime you have faith and you believe in God, and therefore you're brought into righteousness through the Holy Spirit, you have a connection to God that uh, people that don't have the faith do not have. So he was called in, and the first thing he did is he got rid of the unbelief, the doubt. And now I assume that he asked the widows to stay outside because they uh, didn't have the, uh, the faith that he had, so he cleared the room. Then he got on his knees, he humbled himself, and he went to the Lord in prayer. He prayed. But then you must notice what he did next. It, it, didn't, it doesn't say that he asked God, Lord, heal her, Lord, do this, Lord, do that. He looked at the dead woman. Now, the woman was clearly dead. He looked at the problem and he spoke, Tabitha, get up. So how many times do we find ourselves praying? And we go on and on and on and on, and all of these words to God. God, would you do this? God, would you do that? Oh, Lord. But you notice that Peter here spoke three words. Tabitha, get up. You notice that in the accounts of Jesus, especially when he was talking to demons, he spoke few words. He didn't have conversations. When he healed people, he spoke few words. He didn't have these long conversations. It's the power of the word, not the amount of words. The quality, not the quantity. 
So next time that uh, we face a problem that we're praying, let's remember that it's not the amount of words we speak. It's the power that's in our words. It's been a great study, and I hope you're enjoying your coffee like I am. God bless you.